I showed you earlier in the other video that we had a service valve that you were going to learn how to do. Excuse me. Now, understand this is a standard service valve that's connected to your condensing unit outside. This has O-rings in it, rubber O-rings. That's why you cannot get this body of uh, brass hot. Absolutely not. All right? <clears throat> so there's a couple tricks of the trade here that we're going to show you. Here is, it's already, let's say it's already connected to the unit. All right? That, that's how it comes shipped. But you're going to have one end that is not. All right? So it won't have this tip on it but it will come out and have a swedge point on it. That swedge point is where you're going to hook up your line system. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take two pieces of copper. You're going to flare one end, and then you're going to swedge the other. All right? Slide on the flared end and tighten it down, and it doesn't have to be super tight. This is all exercise material. So once you have that tight, now you want to clean your work, okay? So just be sure that everything is cleaned. You've reamed it out, which I've already done prior. Okay? Because at this point in the game, you should know what's going on, all right? Well, I've cleaned the inside and of uh, my other swedge point, and I'm going to slide that right over it, all right? Now, this is representing you putting the copper into this joint here. As I said before, we use this process so that we can save the valve because the valves cost about 100 bucks a piece. Now, once that's accomplished, you have to take off the cap, which has the little valve stem re core remover, and slide it in there gently. And it's just like a bike tire. Just pull it out. Takes a few turns of the tool. And you want to set that aside because you're going to need to have that later. Now, Imagine this. You have two of these valves. This, on this situation, is known as the low side because of the larger size pipe. The high side will be right next to it, which will have smaller pipe. But it's built the same identical way. So therefore, when you take this valve stem out, you must take out the other valve stem on the high side because you're going to put nitrogen through this and it's going to go through the whole system and it's going to come out the high side and relieve the pressure inside the unit. Now, the dry nitrogen, not oxygen, not air, nitrogen, is going to allow no carbonization. Remember we showed you that thing about the, the darkness of the uh, copper inside? Well, when copper gets heated, it oxidizes. And when it oxidizes, it causes those black flakes inside. Well, you don't ever want that. Because once you release the refrigerant, then all that black inside, that uh, um, the flakes, the carbonization, will come off eventually. It will probably come off right away. But whatever is now you have foreign matter inside your line. Now it's going to go, it's got to go somewhere. And eventually it's going to hit either the metering device or start plugging up um, your evaporator. Um, it could filter your filter dryer if you have one on the unit. All those things can happen. And then you're going to end up getting called back and you're going to have to redo the whole system as far as pull a vacuum on it and try to get all that stuff out of there. Very expensive. So please, high side valve, low side valve, remove the valve stems. 
Now, in the future, you're going to see something that kind of looks like a real system. And it may just have a U-pipe, a U-shaped pipe around it representing the low side. But that's in time. It all depends on when we get the other valve. All right? So that you can see how it would work in a real system. Now, what we want to do is at all times, we got to protect this housing. All right? That's our key mission in here. Now, some of the older guys will use just water. Well, that's all right. But water gets steam, steam goes to heat, and it just dissipates, especially if you're on there very long. And remember, you shouldn't be on there any longer than 10 to 15 seconds, all right? If you're doing anything this size and you're taking more time than that, we got an issue, all right? But I'm going to show you down the road how to use this gel. This gel really is nice stuff, okay? It cleans up easy, but it's very easy to put on. But it's a kind of like a, a two-step process. Now, in the black box that you, um, you got the service valve out of, you'll find a black hose. That black hose is going to hook up from the nitrogen valve to this valve. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Over here, or somewhere in the classroom, it, it may eventually end up moving or something. But we have the, uh, the nitrogen bottle. Snatch it up and move it over to your workstation. Grab a hold of your hose. And let's come down and talk about this. All right, we know that the valve is back seated. All right, you take one end. and secure it to the ball valve. Now, what this does is, we don't want 200 PSI running through our valve system and our whole air system, our air conditioning system. The reason being is, you'll never be able to seal that hole, or that, that fitting, all right? So, you take the other end of this, and you attach it to your valve, all right? Just like any other set of gauges, and you, you should know this already, you crack it, all right? Let it stop, then open it up a little bit, all right? One, one and a half turns. Now, set your gauge, all right? Now, we only have it set for about 50 here, all right? Now this is, this is the working gauge to this valve. You, you see that I can't really manage a very small pressure, but in this I can, all right? So therefore, I'm going to turn this, and you see the black ball come up, all right? Now that's 20 PSI, way too much. In your reading, you read that you just need it at about three to five, or where you can feel it coming out of the valve. Now, for training purposes, just push it up and you can feel the nitrogen coming out. Nitrogen is very expensive so that we don't want to waste it, all right? You only turn this on when you are about to braze and turn it off right after you braze, all right? But we only want about five PSI on that puppy, all right? No more, no less. Situate your uh, tank so that you're ready to go. Now you're doing the B tank. You've already been explained how to do it. Use the tool. It's all, you know how to set it up. We're not going to go over that information again. 
But again, what I want to tell you is our goal is to protect this puppy, right? So now you just squeeze it on, and it looks like, you know, a bad case of something, I don't know. But you just want to lightly protect that baby, all right? Because this is going to absorb the heat. Also, be sure that you get it up underneath the valve. All right? Now, you see some of us older guys will do this and then we'll wrap uh, water rags around it. This does it pretty well because you're going to have it done in 10 to 15 seconds. All right? But we're hooked up to our uh, settling B tank. Again, I crack it, open it up one and a half turns, crank it all the way forward, or what we call front seating. Again, for training purposes, I'm not turning the fan on so that you can hear what I'm talking about. But the same process, safety is first concern, all right? Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. You got to turn on your nitrogen. All right, that's going to keep any oxidation from happening. Light, light your torch, pick up your rod, and then drop your shield. Now, my goal is, is to get this done as fast as I can so that this doesn't heat up. I just jump right on it. Remember, test the rod, see how it liquefies. I pull away, and immediately I come down here and shut off my nitrogen. All right. Now I come back, and I want to look at my work. Okay, you see how nice and clean that is, there's no big drips, no runs, no errors, all right? And you see the gel, all right? That valve is really cool to the touch, all right? See, you can play with that and you can feel it, but this valve, perfectly cool, all right? That's how I know that I succeeded in what I was trying to get accomplished. Now, the only difference that you're going to do is you're going to do it on both sides, all right? So always check your gel and be sure that, you know, if you need to get any more um, uh, gel on it before you go do the other side, okay? I recommend that you get both sides set up so once you've been checked out on this and it looks like it's good, then come on over here. Don't do both of them because you may be wrong. This one may be really uh, not real well designed and put together, and you're going to do the same thing on the other side. So please take your time. Now, you notice that I'm putting the ball, uh, the Schrader valve back in. So I'm all done. When you're done, that's what you want to do. Put the cap back on. All right. Of course, you're going to have to cool this off, all right, and you're going to clean up your area. Do not leave this gel all over the place, all right. 
and it will squirt, so just be careful on where it goes. Try to, anyway. Okay. And then, of course, when you're done, wash this rag out so that it's ready for the next student. Again, the safety while that's cooling, your you be sure that you got your gauges shut down. All right, we shut off our main valve. Now we're shutting off the tank valve. Now what we can do is we can drain what's in the tank. All right, then back off the valve. Disconnect the hose. Now, you need to know those steps per batum. Don't sit there and play around and try to BS your way through it. All right? You can, com you can come down and practice this before you uh, have to do it. All right? Get familiar with your equipment. The same thing with the uh, acetylene. Shut off the main valve. Drain it. Close the valve, and now we back off our working valve all the way down, all right? Put away the equipment so it's ready for use for the next student. So we don't have any issues. Always be sure that you put this nitrogen tank back in and secure it. Be sure that everything's good to go. And you remember, don't sit there and go crazy on this. All right? You are the only thing between the next student having an accident and yourself. All right. Again, clean the valve body off because it needs to be ready for the next student. All right. I know I used to get bent out of shape when people don't clean stuff up, and then you got to work with it. All right. Now. Before you go take this off, there's no way that you're going to get this out, okay? So just take the hacksaw and cut that off, all right? Uh, the best way to do that is just as it's on there, all right, so there's a little bit of tension. Just stick it back in there. Use your trusty uh, saw, all right? Cut it off, whack it off, put it in the trash, and you're ready to go. Same thing with the gel bottle. Be sure that you get this back to the instructor. All right, the hose and the valve goes back in the toolbox. Wash out the rag and dump your water when you're done with the exercise. All right, now do not be in a rush for this. Now, you can either use the hacksaw or our trusty tube cutter, okay? Whichever makes you feel better, all right? But the big important thing is safety and ensuring that the next student is ready for his or her exercise. Put all your equipment back, clean up your station, and be checked out by the instructor. Thank you.